History was made this week with the first ever 10,000 NFTs being inscribed on Bitcoin. That's right, you heard that right. These NFTs are actually on Bitcoin, and we're gonna talk about them in this video, the news center around them, and even how to buy them towards the end of the video, so stick around. While this video is not gonna be technical, I did just watch a video that was. It was by Traders University, and I will leave it at the top. He really breaks it down and goes into what an ordinal is, where it was created, how it links to Satoshi, and how everything works. I'm gonna be talking about the news, the hype, and everything centered around this because this is also new to me as someone who's been trading Ethereum NFTs for the last two years and Immutable X NFTs, all kinds of other NFTs, but this is new as far as Bitcoin NFTs go. Now, I do own some NFTs on Stacks ecosystem, which is a layer two or some say layer 1.5 built on Bitcoin, but it's still not actually on Bitcoin like these ordinals are. And we just watched the ordinals go from just a couple being minted, the hype got over a thousand, and yesterday we watched touched over 10,000 of them be inscribed and you can actually inscribe your own today. So an ordinal is essentially an order for a Satoshi. It's not the Satoshi itself, but it's what you want the Satoshi to represent. And they found a way to actually do this in the form of none other than JPEGs. So right now we are at ordinals.com and you can see the latest blocks and everything going on. And these are people's ordinals that they're doing. So they're inscribing their own NFTs to the Bitcoin blockchain and they're even launching their own projects. There's already already an Ordinals Punks that came out uh, in the first 10,000 too, I believe. And apparently one of these Ordinal Punks did sell for 1.89 BTC, which is around $40,000 February 2nd. All that being said, this is where it gets a little iffy. There's not enough systems in place to actually be able to see all these trades to my knowledge. Uh, so until there's like a standard marketplace, which I actually heard Gamma could be a marketplace for ordinals, you cannot buy or sell these unless my assumption is it's an OTC, which is an over-the-counter trade. As you can imagine, gets a little sketchy. There's also a lot of politics involved. A lot of Bitcoin maximalists do not want JPEGs on their primary chain. And so far, it seems like every Everything they brought up has been shot down. One of the issues was there'd be things like this where there's graphic images or sexual images or things that just shouldn't be forever on the chain. Well, this is solved by AI algorithms and node client side. Again, not a technical video, but some of the things you might be thinking of that shouldn't have permanence still will not have permanence, but still be retained in a decentralized system. Yes. I don't know how, but there are smarter people than me that do. The war against Bitcoin maximalists versus JPEGs is actually quite comedic. Uh, one of the first 10,000 ordinals was actually a big picture of a middle finger saying RIP maxis because you can now put NFTs on the Bitcoin blockchain. I don't know. It's just a very interesting dynamic. Should Bitcoin be used for art? Should it be used for currency? Should it be used for storage of value? Uh, and it seems to be a war going on, but ultimately at the end of the day, I can care less. Uh, we had a lot of fun in a space last night just talking about just watching the last 10,000 ordinals come through and cross that mark. Some people are speculating financially, you know, saying if they're in the first 10,000, it could be valuable. Maybe so, maybe not. We'll see how that plays out. I like what my boss had to say against the Bitcoin maximalist last night in the spaces. He said, what do you have against fun? And that's kind of how I feel about it too. So with 500 people in Twitter spaces last night, we waited for the last block to go through. And instead of being the top 10 thousand and actually landed on 9,999. It was very comedic. So we ended up having to wait another hour for that 10,000th one to come through. And for the culture to make history, it ended up being, you heard it, the number 69 with a white background was a 10,000th ordinal that came through. The 10,000th inscription on BTC was the number 69. Pretty hilarious for NFT culture, just being a culture of memes and fun and messing around, yet still with a lot of financial backing. So you're watching this and you want to make your own Bitcoin ordinal. I tried last night, but I don't have Bitcoin in my trading wallets. I have it in my storage wallet to be able to mess around around with, uh, so I wasn't actually able to do it. This was extremely complex a week ago. I mean, extremely, you had to be very technical advanced, but right now you don't because there are good systems in place. I haven't tried this myself, but I've had people recommend it to me. It's by Satoshables on Twitter. It's called ordinalsbot.com. You just go to it, you drag an image, you type in your BTC address, and, it's in, and obviously make sure you type the right address. You submit and you pay the invoice of it's fairly cheap. I think it was under like 50 bucks. And essentially, you can mint your NFT as an ordinal on Bitcoin. Now, this is really at this point and at this stage just for fun. 
there's not really a financial incentive that I'm aware of besides that top 10,000 that was very speculative, but this is just for permanence. And let's get into that for the end of this video. I think when I was first learning about NFTs, one of the things that really attracted me was permanence. You think of a lot of centralized servers. If that server goes down, so do, so do your pictures on that server, so do a lot of things. So if you have something really important to you, like an artifact, like in, let's say real life, you wanna bury that artifact and come back to it, 50 years, you want your grandkids to be able to get it 100 years from now or whatever, you want that permanence, you know, you're kind of able to do that. But as far as the internet goes, we don't really have that secure system. The cloud's not gonna, possibly not gonna be around forever. Our images can be lost, things can happen. The permanence of Bitcoin and hopefully Ethereum are here to stay as long as I'm aware. So you could put artifacts on the blockchain that could be discovered 500 years from now that silly little jpeg that you put on there um, by you know generations and generations of something that really has value to you something very sentimental so that idea of digital permanence and perseverance kind of like a storage unit that we used to have for stuff uh, this is like digital stuff being put on the blockchain was really just changing for me. It really showed me the power of the blockchain. And that's just one of the many things in Web3 that I'm very bullish about. All that to say, I might be uploading some ordinances in the future that mean a lot to me. There will be projects. Ultimately, to my knowledge, this is going to be more expensive than Ethereum. I still think Ethereum is going to be one of the places to be for NFTs. I see these being fun and I do see people not only doing artifacts, but definitely low supply projects. Ultimately, I do believe this is more expensive than other options. And if people are going to do BTC NFTs, they'll probably go with something like Stacks. That's a layer two or a layer 1.5. We'll just see how it goes. Let me know your thoughts about Bitcoin NFTs down below in the comments and I will see you guys next time. Peace out.